So in this video, we're going to build the arithmetic logic unit, or the ALU, for our computer. And in the last video, we walked through the schematic for it, which is which is this here. In this video, we're, we're going to build it. Um, so we've got the 4-bit the adders, which we're going to use the 74LS283s for. So we've got a couple of those. We're also going to have our um, XOR gates down here, uh, which we're going to use the 74LS86, uh, which gives us four XOR gates, so we'll need two of those to uh, do our XOR gates. Uh, and then finally, we've got our, our tri-state buffers here uh, connecting to the bus. And so we're gonna use a, a 74LS245, which um, again, it's well, it's, it's this bi-directional thing. We're only gonna use it in one direction. I'm, I'm just using this because it's convenient that all the inputs are on one side and all the outputs on the, are on the other side. So we're gonna use, we're gonna use a 74LS245 for that. And so those, those, are, those are the chips that we're gonna use with this. Now we're going to be connecting this to the stuff we've already built, right? We've already built our A register and B register, which are going to be the inputs to the ALU. And so really what we can do is kind of build it in between uh, these, these, two, uh, these two registers so that we can, because we're going to want to connect up you know, the two registers because those are going to be the inputs into our ALU. And so really what we want to do is, is take another one of these um, uh, breadboards and kind of squeeze it in, in the middle here. Uh, and then build it on on here. Uh, but one thing I'm going to do just to, to kind of make things more convenient is, you know, I've got these these terminal strips along the edge for the power that, that we're using. Um, and rather than having two of those next to each other, what we can do is actually remove those uh, from from here and just put this middle section in there. And there's this uh, double-sided uh, foam adhesive -y thing on the back here. Uh, so you have to kind of cut that off. So I can just take a knife and uh, Cut that off. So, do that without cutting myself. And so then that just cuts that off. And then same for this. And so that just cuts off these two terminal strips. And we'll save these. We're going to use these actually for, for the bus. You can, you can hook these together like that. Um, and then once we get two more, that'll give us eight, uh, eight terminal strips for our bus. So rather than having this mess that we've got here just temporarily, we can put a nice uh, bus terminal in, in the middle there. But then that also leaves us with just this little piece here that we can then hook in between these two boards. Let me just kind of clip those in there and then connect that there. And now we've got this nice spot in here that we can build our ALU. So I'll start by just uh, putting the chips on the board. So we've got our, uh, our buffer here. This is the 74LS245. And you'll see, oh boy. And you'll see it looks very similar to the 74LS245s that we have on the registers because it's the same chip. Um, and we're going to use it in the same way to interface to our, to our bus. Then, of course, we've got our two uh, 74LS283s. Uh, so these are our 4-bit adders that we're going to cascade together to get an 8-bit adder. Um, and then, of course, we, we want our XOR uh, gates over here that we're going to use uh, as part of our negation logic to, uh, uh, to, to negate the B register when we want to subtract. So we can, uh, so those are, those are all the chips that we need. Now I'll go ahead and hook up the power. Well, actually I'm going to disconnect this whole thing from power while I'm working on it. So I don't, uh, damage anything, but, uh, I'll hook up the power pins on all these chips. Okay, so that's all of our power pins. While we're at it, I'll also neaten up this uh, power connection between these boards now that this is a little bit more of a uh, permanent kind of a thing here. Well, permanent, <laughs> building it on a breadboard. In any event, <laughs> there we go. Now, before we start wiring all this up, I'm gonna move a couple of these things, uh, these other little signals that we have out of the way, um, just because we're gonna be running some wires through here and get this out of the way. Uh, and then we also have these clock signals that are kind of in the way. So um, actually now that these boards are connected, what we can do is rather than running this clock signal down to here, we can kind of hook this up like this. 
And so that's just connecting the clock signals from the A register and B register together. Um, and of course they're still connected to the clock, we just don't have this other wire running all over the place. So now we can focus just on the ALU. And the first thing I'm gonna do is we've got the two four bit adders, but of course we're adding eight bits. So what we can do is connect the carry out of uh, one adder to the carry in of the other. Uh, and so just that connection there from the carry out to the carry in will connect these together and give us an eight bit adder. So now I'm gonna connect the A register to one input of, the, of, the, of this adder. And the A register, remember, you know, we've got this uh, buffer that's connecting it to the bus, uh, but, but its value is always available. You know, we're always gonna see what's in the register on these LEDs. Um, so over here, we also have whatever's in that register is, is available to us. So this, uh, now we've connected our A register to the A inputs of the uh, four bit adders. And of course, you've gotta be careful to look for, you know, the A, A1, A2, A3, A4 inputs on these uh, registers and, and get everything lined up. And, you know, generally A1 is gonna be the low order bit, um, sort of this, this first bit over here, and then A234, and then A1234 of the second chip. And so now that we've got the A register, uh, all eight bits of that hooked up to the, the A inputs of our two four-bit adders, the next thing I wanna do is hook up the outputs of both of our four-bit adders uh, to the, the tri-state buffers. And so again, important to you know, look at the, the pinout of the, of the adders and make sure you're connecting output one, output two, output three, output four, and so forth in order. Okay, so now we have our A register connected to one input of our adders, and we have the output of our adders connected to the inputs of our tri-state buffers here. And of course, you can see, even though I'm trying to keep this neat here, it's, it's starting to get pretty messy, and it's gonna get even messier when we hook up our, our B register through our XOR gates. So you just need to be careful and make sure you're keeping all your bits in order and everything. So now we wanna connect our B register to the other input of our adders but we don't wanna connect it directly to the input of the adder like we did with the A register. We wanna be able to negate the B register in case we wanna subtract. So we have these XOR gates here, so we're gonna connect the, all eight bits of our B register to one input uh, of each of these eight XOR gates, and then we'll connect the output of the XOR gates to uh, the other input of our adders. And then the second input of the XOR gates, we'll, we can connect to a, a control signal that lets us decide if we're gonna invert or not. Uh, so, so the first step there is to connect the eight bits of our B register to uh, one input of, of each of the eight XOR gates. Okay, I think we've got our B register now hooked to one of the inputs of our XOR gates. So that's essentially these connections down here, these eight uh, connections from our B register going to our eight XOR gates. Uh, next, I'll connect up the output of the XOR gates to that second input of our four bit adders. Okay, now we have the outputs of our XOR gates connected to that second input of our adders. So now our adders are, are fully connected, right? We've got our A register uh, connecting in here. We've got our B registers connecting uh, through the XOR gate, or the outputs of the XOR gates uh, going into the other input of the four bit adder. And then we have the outputs of the four bit adders going to the inputs of our uh, tri-state logic, or tri-state uh, buffers. So now the, the second input of our XOR gates is our subtract bit, and that tells us if we're subtracting or adding. And that's easy enough because that's all just connected to, together, so it's just one signal. Okay. 
Okay, with that, we're now connecting up all of the, the second inputs of all of our XOR gates together. And then we can uh, you know, use that as a signal, which you know, if it's low, then we're adding. And if it goes high, then we're subtracting. So we'll put that low for now, uh, but we can control that. But actually to subtract, we have to do more than just uh, invert everything in our B register. We also need to add one to get the negative number, the twos complement negative number. You know, right now we're just inverting, so we're just getting a ones complement. So to get a twos complement, we need to invert and add one. So to add one, whenever uh, this uh, subtract signal is high, we have a one there, we can send that into the carry in of our adder. So we just hook up uh, that same signal to the carry in uh, bit there of our adder. Try to squeeze all that in there. Um, and so now, if that's hooked up right, uh, we've got our invert, and then we're also sending that same signal over as a carry in on our 8-bit on our, on our, uh, adder. That's our two 4-bit adders. So this should work as our subtract signal. And then, of course, for our output signal, we've got our, our buffer here, but we, need, we just need to hook up that enable which is a pin 19 of, of this uh, tri-state buffer. And so if that's high, then it's not enabled. And if it's low, then it is enabled. So we've got that. Uh, and then we also want to set the, this is a bi-directional uh, buffer, uh, if, you're, if you recall. And so what you can see with these other ones, we've set the direction pin, which is pin one. We've just set that high. So we'll do that for, for this as well. If I can squeeze in there and just take that first, uh, first pin high. So that direction will always be out. And then I think the only other thing we'd want to do is just hook up some LEDs so we can uh, actually see what the result of our arithmetic is here. And so we can <laughs> we can kind of jam in those uh, those eight LEDs. It is a, it is a little tight, you know, because it's these. It's the, you know, we're looking at these eight pins right in a row here that are going into our buffer. And, and we're looking at it on, on the input side of our, of our buffer so we can, we can always see what's here even if we're not actually outputting it to the bus. And actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I, these are, I mean, these are fine the way they are, um, but I'm gonna try and neaten these up a little bit just by bending the leads and, and cutting things and you know, trimming things. You can see these are nice and neat. Um, it's gonna be a little bit harder here because you know, these pins are all right next to each other, so I'm going to have to be kind of a little bit creative as I bend these. But let me, let me do that just to make this a little bit neater. Obviously, totally optional. So you can see I've bent the, the pins to fit here. Of course, as I go here, I've got to bend them a little bit longer and make sure everything fits just right. The other thing you can do is you get as you get further away, um, this is just some insulation that I stripped off of one of these other wires, and you can kind of just thread it on there uh, because these are starting to, you know, get so close that they might start overlapping. So that insulation can, can kind of help prevent some shorting. Uh, if you need to, you can cut a longer piece of insulation and uh, put that on there. Because these are, these are getting real close here. Hopefully these aren't going to cause me any trouble. There we go. I think that is, I think that's hooked up right. So you can kind of see, you know, as these LEDs get further away, I've got to extend the leads a little bit further. And I put some insulation on this one here so it doesn't uh, run into the other ones. But um, we might, hopefully this isn't, isn't too fussy. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for the ALU. Um, of course, we would also want to connect the output of it here uh, up to our bus. So we'd you know, essentially connect another set of eight wires from the eight output pins of the 74LS245 over to our, our bus. Uh, but for now, we, we won't do that. I, uh, we can, but let's uh, go ahead and plug it in and, and see what happens. 
and oh, already I can tell something doesn't look right. So uh, yeah, this doesn't, this definitely, oh boy. Okay, well that, this is this is good. Um, I will probably, well actually, to, to just kind of point out what I'm seeing here. So what I'm seeing is, for whatever reason when I powered this up, uh, the B register had this uh, value of, of, I guess it looks like eight in it. Um, and then the A register is just all zeros. So the sum register should be zero plus eight. So this should be an eight here. Uh, but what I'm seeing is a four. So that tells me something's not working, right? Because the sum, sum register should always represent the sum of A plus B. And then if we change the, the subtract bit, then it should show A minus B. And it's not doing that. Um, so we might have some bits uh, mixed up in here um, or something, uh, but uh, we'll have to we'll have to do some troubleshooting, uh, which is which is fine. I mean that happens sometimes. You you build something and it doesn't work quite quite right. So what I'll do is stop this video now, and in the next video uh, we'll we'll spend a little bit more time because I suspect this will take a little bit of time uh, to uh, to chase down and and see what we might have done wrong.